lovelies and a happy new year 2018 to you so here's the start of a brand new book year brand new um exciting things hopefully coming on my channels and lovely books that we can share and talk about and i thought i'd kick it off with another one of my q bookshelf tours I'm taking all my books out of this one here this time and i had so many comments about how people were enjoying them i thought we'd kick the new year off with another great big pile of books that i haven't read yet that's uh needs tackling i'm sure i don't recognize many i've read on here oh dear <laughs> so one of my challenges this year is to get through some of my uh, books on my shelves uh if not then to unhaul them and that's that if i've not read them in the last few years i don't think i'm going to so we'll see so we'll start with the series that i have and this was one of the ch the only series challenge i did complete in 2017 was the um the selection series by kira cass and um as most of you have seen these the um ya and they are in an alternative world where a very regimental class system exists or well, the first three are and they have a um it's a bit like a reality TV show, The Selection, where there's so many girls compete for the hand in marriage of the prince. And it's something I didn't think I'd like, but I loved it. I loved them. Um, after I'd read book three, I did want really that, that to know more about uh, the prince and, um, you know, who they found. I think she's called America. Yeah. He's called Prince Maxon and she's America. And I would have liked to have had a bit more going on with them because the last two is their daughter. So enjoyed all of those. I'm really glad to have read all those. Um, yeah. Might be the only ones I've read on here. <laughs> Crow Moon. Total by, by the cover. Red Witch. Um yeah it sounds like these are a little bit fantasy dystopian um don't know much about them not generally my sort of uh, genre but yeah i just like looking at those covers and probably because they're a cover only by they're still on there and i've not read them but uh, yes to read pile another two of similar vein the glass sword and the red queen victoria aveyard uh yes we've heard a lot about this on booktube and i didn't just go by the covers um i like the sound of it um the reds are common as ruled by silver elite and then the glass sword mark barrow's blood is red the color of common folk but her silvery ability the power to control lightning has turned her into a weapon that silver court will do nothing but destroy i'm not sure which order i should read those in so can somebody tell me that first or that first i can't seem to find out so will somebody let me know down below which i should read first i'd be very grateful next i got this with some christmas money last year and i've still not read it absolute deception by leslie loco i think it's loco or laco i think it's loco um and um we've got somebody who's one of the most celebrated fashion designers yet despite her phenomenal success she chooses to live as a recluse rarely granting interviews she won't talk about her past not even to her only daughter it is a time and place to which she will never return until it's one of those so yeah i don't know why i've not read it it sounds exciting to read pile northern lights it's a nice cover tim o'brien this is one that i got in last year's sales uh new year's sales i guess we're really we're really brothers aren't we don't know what that means except it means that some of the same things we remember harvey has returned from vietnam tough cynical and world weary his brother paul stayed at home quite interesting to see there'll be some uh, 
might be quite psychological, might be quite emotional, but I uh, don't know, I've not read that either. See, shove them in this cube, shove them on the back. Forgotten me there. Moth Girls and Cassidy. To be read. Helplessly drawn like moths to a flame. Mm. To be read. Jane Green. Saving Grace, the best-selling author, the number one best-selling author. I don't know what she was the best-selling author of. <laughs> I think the title is Saving Grace. They've just made a big thing of her name. I, I'm not so fond of that, really. I like it. I like to know what the title of the book is. But anyway, it's uh, got a nice finish. It's got a nice finish to it, even though her name's in lights. And. Um, I think it's a bit of a romance, a uh, bit of a mystery romance, that sort of thing. Got that in the sales last year. It is a lovely cover actually, not red. Let me know if any of these you've read yourself. And uh, Tana French, I've had this a long time, The Secret Place. I think a lot of people have heard of Tana French. And uh, yeah, we've got a good old murder, bit of a psychological thriller mystery in there. Um, yeah, need to crack on with that. I don't think I've got any more of hers anyway. Next, Slade House. Yeah, a couple of years ago there were a lot on booktube about this, David Mitchell. The author of The Cloud Atlas. Now, I, I've heard a lot of good things about this. It's a bit of a magical realism book, I think. Um, you go into this house if you're invited and, I, and goodness knows what happens when you're there. Um, it says Mitchell masterfully humorously combines the classic components of a scary story Ooh, old house dark alley missing persons with a realism when describing the lives of the victims that is pacey funny and true so really and it's got lovely green edges I need to crack on with that I didn't like Cloud Atlas I mean I know that's another one of these really hyped books back in a few years ago I didn't like it didn't get on with it whether that puts me off trying this I don't know but I need to get to it The Gift of Rain this is by Tan Twang Eng long listed for the man booker prize in 2007 cracky <laughs> it'll be 11 years so uh yeah i definitely do need to crack on with it don't i and um i like the the premise of this uh it was also featured as one of the books um new stuff radio 3 book club and it's set in Penang in 1939 so a bit of a historical fiction there I'm not really sure what it's about but uh, yeah need to get on with that one Flowers in the Field this is by Sarah Harrison now I know I featured this when I did uh, and you'll be able to find it in the back playlist um, remember when I did uh, a call out for all the books I had with roses on the front or rose petals or um, poppy looking things uh, flowers on the front I'm sure I, I mentioned this then and I've not still not read it uh, three women one family a world devastated by war and uh, I think it's a World War II um, fiction so yeah all fantastic books on this cube aren't they she says when she's not read them got a bit of a thing there right Jilly Macmillan Burnt Paper Sky now I've heard quite a bit about this going around Rachel Jenner turned her back for a moment now her eight-year-old son Ben is missing and what really happened in that fateful afternoon uh, yeah we'll see I'm getting a bit fed up though with a lot of these we're getting a lot of psychological thrillers where children have gone missing or we're revisiting that children went missing or the daughter went missing 20 years ago and then we find a b and c out um i've done quite a few good read not good reads 
NetGalley for publishers, uh, psychological thrillers, and it seems to be a bit of a theme at the moment. Um, I'm getting a bit fed up with it, actually. So I wonder if that's why I've not uh, not had. Well, our lovely, well-known Val McDermott, the, one of the Queen of Crime fiction, um, Northanger Abbey. Yeah, I thought that'd be quite good. So the Queen of Crime meets. Who wrote Northanger Abbey? I should know. I can't think. Who wrote Northanger Abbey? Was it one of the Brontes? Or was it Emma Doody? Emma Doody. Jane Austen. <laughs> Emma. Jane Austen. I think Northanger Abbey is one of the Brontes. <coughs> no, it's not. It's Jane Austen. <laughs> It's the brilliant reworking of Jane Austen's original. I think this sounds thrilling. So Val, she can't, she can't write anything wrong, Val McDermid. And uh, yeah, so forget about it. I don't know my Brontes from my Austins, even though I'm in the UK. Not read. Unfaithfully yours. Ooh, now look at this cover. Nigel Williams. I like the look of this. I bought this. This was a cover by. A suburban black comedy that only Nigel Williams can pull off with such outrageous wit. A wonderfully entertaining novel which cannot fail to delight. We like a bit of uh, bit of black humour, don't we? When Elizabeth Price engages a private detective to find out about her husband's suspected affair, sets off a, an unwittingly chain of correspondence. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I wonder if this is her or private detective to be read spill falter with a this is Sarah Baum I, I think this was one of the winners or shortlist for the man booker prize the year before last I think because I, I recall getting um you know like a, a job lot as it were of the, the ones that were involved in it and uh, I've still not read it I think it's a boring cover I think that's why I've not read it. it's a boring cover I know it's got a nice dog on it but it's a boring cover um, a misfit man finds a misfit dog one eye a vicious little bugger smaller than expected but a good ratter <laughs> Both are accustomed to being alone, unloved and outcast. So I think it's got a really um, good solid uh, premise there. I don't know why I've not read it. It's the cover. Definitely is the cover. Yeah, could have been, could have been a bit more thrilling to read. Tuscan Rose. Uh, Belinda Alexandra. I've read other books by her. Yeah, I like, I like the, this author. I like her writing. Tuscan Rose World War Two. I'm sure it's not World War One. I'm sure it's a World War Two fiction, and um, it's a bit of a bit of a biggie. Um, but I hope to get to that soon. Again, I think you know Rose on the front, and um, yeah, I need to get to that. I think it's set in Italy with the title that it says there. The Devil's Staircase, as you know, I've read that recently, Helen Fitzgerald. Uh, yeah, five star read for me, it was amazing. Uh, don't read the back, don't read the back, it spoils it. If you don't read the back, there's this amazing twist that's thrilling. So, never come across her before, but recently I found The Exit by Helen Fitzgerald. And yeah, I'm not going to read the back again because... As I said, it, it would have spoiled it if I'd have read the back for that. Um, looking forward to that one. So that's a red. That's a to be read. Kerry McGuinness, Out of Alice. I want to say Out of Africa. But Out of Alice, that was a film of it, Out of Africa. Um, Sarah Blake takes up position as a governess on Red Hill Station in Central Australia. She isn't expecting to encounter a family in crisis or to uncover a tra tragedy of her own. 
uh, looks like she's written quite a lot of a similar vein uh, that'd be interesting I haven't read that many books in Australia a town called Alice now that was Australian that's a big classic I love that book actually uh, but that is obviously set in the that is set in the war and uh, that is I'm trying to think of the author somebody really quite famous but we're, we're talking a no classic now um don't know why why i've not read that i think that's one that hauled when we went to barter books uh, in April for my birthday up in Northumberland uh, next Swimming Home this is Mary Rose McCall best selling international author of Falling Snow in Falling Snow I've not read anything by this author this is one that I got in the uh, sales for Boxing Day last year not read it 1925 this is another Australian one Ah, 1925 Australia. I'll put that with Out of Alice then. And finally, Cinder, the Lunar Chronicles, Melissa Mayer. Now everybody will have heard the the you know the Lunar Chronicles all over BookTube for the last couple of years, and it was it's the retelling of various fairy tales. So this is the retelling, Cinder. It's the only one I've got at the moment retelling of Cinderella now that was one of my challenges for this year to read this series because there's many many people that have read it even people that wouldn't normally pick up this this type of book have read it and really enjoyed it and uh, people that read very similar to me um, but yeah not bought any more than the one still not read the one still not accomplished the series so we'll see what we could do this year <laughs> so there we go it's surprising what you can fit in one of these cubes uh it's surprising how many you haven't read that you can fit in one of these tubes so i really need to crack on and uh and read some of these don't i every time i do a cube it seems to be uh two for that pile for red ten for that pile not red anyway see you again next time bye for now